Hello there. I'll praise the Lord. We are grateful to God who has sustained us over the week long. And today being our last day of uh, sharing our devotion this week, or the last day of week two, we want to thank the Lord for his word. And I believe that uh, we are learning and that the word of God has continued to make us sharper and transform us to what the Lord desires us to be. We've been looking at the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. And uh, today we will be looking at the last verse in that portion, that is uh, verse 17. And we are grateful to God for this opportunity. Uh, I will pray and then we will read verse 16 and 17 together. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for this opportunity to share your word, we want to thank you. I pray for my listener that, Lord, they will be patient even as we get a few minutes to reflect on your word and that your, your word will be a blessing to us as we share it this morning through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Allow me to read verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today we'll be looking at the subject, righteousness in the gospel. And yesterday, we followed Apostle Paul as he built his case on the power of the gospel of Christ in bringing salvation to all men. Upon being saved, believers are imputed with Christ's righteousness. That is to say, believers don't radiate their own righteousness, but the one that proceeds from Christ, but manifested in the believer's life. And that's what we are looking at. So what can we pick from verse 17? Righteousness. Paul says, For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Righteousness of God is a major concept in this letter to the Romans. Paul may have developed uh, this aspect or subject of righteousness from the Old Testament where righteousness meant or means God doing what is right or God acting to make things right. You can read some of those uh, uh, items in 1 Samuel chapter, 7, chapter 12, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7, and also Psalm chapter 7, verse 9. On his own merit, God forgave Israelites their sins and vindicated them. And this is one of the lessons that we take from this verse, that everyone, regardless of their race, religion, language, and so forth, if they believe in God by putting their faith in Christ, who is also called the gospel of God, they experience God's vindication. And this vindication is a judicial aspect that confers on believers the status of righteousness. Elsewhere in this letter, that is in chapter 3, verse 20 to 23, Paul says, No one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law as some of the Jews, of course, wanted it to be. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus. I want to repeat that. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, not to some, to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fallen and fall short of the glory of God. So everybody who puts their trust and confidence in God are justified, they are vindicated, and they are considered righteous. Even for Abraham, for believing in God, it was credited on him as righteousness. Jews, just uh, like the Gentiles, 
needed the same repentance and forgiveness of their sins through faith in Jesus Christ. And therefore, there is no other means to God's vindication. It's only by faith through Christ Jesus. So anyone who wants to walk in fellowship and in right with God, anyone who desires God's vindication, they must find it by repenting their sins and believing in his son, Jesus Christ, who is the gospel of God, the power of transformation, as we saw yesterday. While this vindication is, is, is in one part God's doing, the believer must respond to God's grace by faith in order to experience this vindication. And this now marks the heart of the gospel of Christ, that those God has justified will only remain so by living their faith in God, who is the source of their vindication or their righteousness. As Jesus said that he is the vine and we are the branches, if we are to bear fruits, we must remain attached to the branch. Righteousness can therefore never be gained. That is the other thing that we learn. That righteousness can never be gained or attained by good works like regular attendance of the church, being born to a devout Christian parents, singing in the choir, giving our tithes faithfully, being kind to others. All these are meant to be product. They are meant to be a product of a life uh, of a life of faithfulness. They are meant to be product of a life lived in Christ and not substitute for our faith in God. If God were to judge us on the basis of how good we are or what good or bad things that we have done, uh, I think that no one would stand his judgment. Our good works and deeds must be premised on the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. Human efforts cannot and will never substitute our faith and trust in God. If you have therefore uh, been, uh, if you have therefore been taking comfort in the godly things that you do, and not invest in walking right with God, in this new year, you may want to change your step and focus more in your relationship with God. Even as you become more productive in your service in the ministry. I believe our sharing this week has been a blessing to you. Today, we have talked about righteousness of God, which can only be found by putting our trust and confidence in Jesus Christ, his only son. And while this vindication is God's initiative, we must respond to God's grace by faith. And that righteousness or this vindication cannot be maintained and sustained by good works. It can only be maintained by walking right with God. And therefore, maybe you now uh, uh, you may now not be confirmed to the uh, be, be, um, uh, let me let me put it this way our our theme for this year is do not be do not be conformed but be transformed that's what i wanted to say <laughs> you may therefore today choose not to be conformed to the patterns of this world but be transformed in the renewing of your mind as you and I fashion our lives according to God's holy word and allow the word of God to transform us this year to what his will is and that we will allow Jesus to be the center of our lives, the transforming power in the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. If you have never given your life to Christ, uh, that is what you need to consider. If you have given your life to Christ, you must not conform to the patterns of this world, but you must seek to be transformed daily by the word of God in the renewing of your mind. I want to believe that our sharing has been a blessing to you over the week, and I pray that the Lord will help you and I to fashion our lives according to his will and desire. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that your word will change us, and I want to pray for my reasoner, whatever they may be going through, wherever they are at. We pray that, Father, your love will continue to search them. And that, Father, you help us to fashion our lives according to your will and desire for our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.